All right. So, um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our breakout group, uh, supporting children and youth caught in the crossfire of war. Um, I will be our moderator moderator today. Um, so to use our time wisely, I'm going to have each presenter introduce each other. Um, and then I'll time each presentation and I will let each speaker know when they have one minute left using the raise hand function. Um, discussion questions and comments will be done through the chat room following each presenter. Um, I will read the discussion questions as they appear in the chat room. Um, we have about 10 minutes to discuss each presentation. Um, so why don't um, Dr. Uh, Velikona, if you wanna start by introducing Dr. Kolosinik, um, and we'll go from there. Please, Dr. Kolosinik. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, good morning or good afternoon, dear colleagues. It's a pleasure for me to introduce you my colleague, Mariana Velikona. Uh, Mariana has PhD in psychology. Uh, she is a Yevrosai registered psychologist. She is an associate professor at practical psychology department at Krivirik State Pedagogical University, Krivirik, Ukraine. And Mariana is the head of psychoanalytic psychology and psychotherapy division uh, in the National Psychological Association of Ukraine. Thank you, and please welcome uh, Dr. Ludmila Kolisnik. She is a counseling psychologist from Sulma State University, Ukraine, and now she is also a research fellow in Aarhus University in Denmark. Uh, she is a deputy head of the NGO Association of Psychologists of Higher School of Ukraine. Um, uh, I will start by sharing my screen. Uh, my presentation uh, is entitled Psychological Effects of the War on School Students and Changes in School Psychological Services. I want to start that with that, um, that studies involving school children and adolescents in wartime are challenging. And to the moment, you may find if you go on search both in English or in Ukrainian, you will find that zero studies in psychology or mental health reported results on studying Ukrainian children after the 2022 Russian invasion directly. I mean, directly involving children, um, assessing children. Uh, but we have some studies uh, devoted to indirect um, uh, research. Uh, one study surveyed school psychologists on their observations about school children's response to the war. Two studies surveyed um, primary school teachers on, on their attempts to adjust education to wartime and besides uh, what do they observe in children? One study, which is in press, surveyed ch children's parents about their children's response to the war. One study reported mental health professionals experience in working with Ukrainian children. And one study assessed the mental health of Ukrainian adolescent refugees in Germany. So you can find a, a study which, um, assesses uh, children within Ukraine uh, to the moment. And uh, this situation is not new for us. After the 2014 Russian invasion, first data about children was collected uh, a year or two after. So in 2015, in 2016, and later. I won't uh, comment on these points. You can just see some references about uh, school children, sc uh, during that period. This presentation refers to uh, a study which I conducted uh, together with my colleagues. Uh, you, you may see uh, three studies uh, actually, but the first one will be uh, showed more today. Uh, this study also include Ludmila Kolisnik, <laughs> who, who was the co-author of this. Uh, and uh, we worked uh, in um, April 2022. Uh, we tried to um, gather information from psychologists uh, who works at schools uh, from Krivirik. Krivirik, it is a city in the central part of Ukraine, which was uh, 50 kilometers near the front line. 
near the hostilities. And this city experienced daily missile attacks when we gathered our data. Uh, we started with two non-structured interviews with school psychologists. I mean, with two school psychologists, uh, just to uh, collect uh, how uh, their work, what, what their work looked like in wartime, what they wanted to highlight, what they wanted to describe. Uh, based on these interviews, we elaborated an online survey. Um, we had a lot of questions there, including some validated um, measure tools like assessing burnout, assessing the resilience of school uh, psychologists and so on. But uh, the, the main questions were uh, this one. So we had three open questions, like what psychological responses to the war you observe in children at primary school? Then the next question, the same, but in secondary school and the third in high school. And uh, after they uh, filled in this narrative um, responses on the next page they also uh, had uh, three closed questions similar to the previous ones uh, we provided them with a list of stress reactions elaborated by young and colleagues and asked them to mark which symptoms they observe at in children at primary school and then in secondary school and then in high school uh, we collected uh, 47 uh, responses uh, in total, we have uh, 145 schools at Kriveri, so uh, approximately 100 of uh, uh, psychologists um, work there, but we collected only 47. And uh, these, these are some results. First of all, we tried to make a content analysis of their narrative uh, responses. We uh, tried to collect some uh, what uh, categories they mention. And you see that we then grouped them into four groups, emotional categories, cognitive, physical, and behavioral. From this data, you may see that in both, in all three groups, I mean, three age groups, uh, all um, psychologists mentioned uh, emotional responses of children uh, more frequently. But uh, 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 we see the, some tendency that, uh, uh, for instance, in primary school and secondary school, they had also physical um, manifestations of uh, their uh, uh, world-related stress, uh, which was not inherent to high school students. And also, you can see some dynamics, some ten the tendency that high school students uh, manifested their stress levels in behavior more frequently. And also, I want to highlight a point which was uh, crucial for us, uh, that when in primary school and secondary school, uh, anxiety was most prevalent, like feeling which has no object. You are just in anxiety, but you can't uh, describe what you are afraid of. However, in high school students, uh, they had uh, a specific fear about their future. And we analyzed it uh, in relation to their age, that they wanted to uh, choose their profession, to choose university. And when uh, the Ru Russia in invaded, uh, all that future was at risk. Uh, so they were um, uh, worried about that a lot. Uh, th these results uh, are about... Um, I mean, on this slide, you can see results about uh, the list of symptoms. And again, you may see that uh, emotional reactions were the most prevalent um, as observed in all three uh, groups uh, and tested by cross wallace test. And the last part of the results is about how uh, school um, psychological services uh, changed their work to adjust uh, to what they observed. So, uh, as you as you can, may see, um, uh, these uh, it differed. Some uh, psychologists said that they started to work more in individual form uh, than in group form than usual. 
but others said the opposite that they started to work with groups more than in individually uh, about a third said they started to work with uh, student parents more than usual but about half said that no they started to work with parents uh, of students less uh, uh, about a third said they uh, worked with students more and others that they work with students less and so on. Uh, it also includes uh, school staff. But in general, when we um, generalized all responses, we saw that there were three key points uh, which were inherent to majority. First, that they conduct more individual consultations than usual in general. It, it, Dr. Not... Reliko, now we're out of time. So if you just want to give us like one wrap up with, you know, any key points or takeaway. Uh, yes, it, these are key points. So the, you can uh, read. I won't, only want to add that uh, the only number which is not on uh, on the screen, but it should be said that uh, more than a half of school psychologists said they were not prepared to conduct crisis intervention at all. So at the moment of invasion, they were not prepared and they they uh, should uh, simultaneously observe what is going on and adjust to it and learn something, find information and do all that uh, surviving themselves uh, in war time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, I'm going to now ask for people to put questions in the chat. Um, any comments or questions, um, please, please feel free to write it in the chat and I will um, read those out loud. Any specific questions for Dr. Velikodna or um, comments? Um, okay. Let me see. All right. So um, we have a question here that asks um, Have schools had to close often during this time period? Thanks for the for question. Uh, no, uh, the point is that many schools shifted online, uh, but um, uh, in the wartime, all schools uh, shifted to be uh, shelters. So uh, Krivery hosted many uh, citizens of Mariupol and uh, other people from Donetsk, Luhansk region, and psychologists work and and other chill teachers they worked uh the first part of the day online or in person with children and then they uh met uh all that in internally displaced people who came to their shelter and they some of them even cooked for these people and some of them uh, should uh, have to they have to uh, uh be uh, like uh, just people on duty uh, in these shelters at nights to uh, to help all these people who um, uh, had to uh, live in these uh, schools, like at temporary houses. Thank you. Um, I'm going to leave time for just, uh, we have time probably for one or two more questions. Um, so are there any efforts to provide crisis and or trauma training to school psychologists now? Uh, yes, uh, in several uh, weeks and uh, after the Russian invasion, we had the first training uh, free of charge provided by a Portuguese psychological association and hosted by uh, in Ukraine by the National Psychological Association. And this training was repeated multiple times. Plus we have, uh, we had lots of trainings focused uh, on the work of uh, with children and locally at schools and for, for, for many people. So the situation uh, changed from that moment, but uh, it was interesting how, how people deal with this situation with lack of, of information. But now we have lot of, lots of trainings and some of them are still ongoing. And uh, what we um, 
hear from people who were trained that they need to be retrained uh, every several months. So even people who are trained in crisis intervention and they have practice, so they provide these crisis interventions, they feel that they uh, need to even to attend the same course one more time just to again to um, um, to remember it because uh, when you live in, when you are living in wartime your cognitive abilities are always attacked all the time and that is why uh, to to make something really good you have to uh, like um, uh, put it in the fr in the frame again thanks Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Relikona. Um, I'm going to have a switch over to Dr. Uh, Kolosinik, um, if you want to go ahead and present um, um, and, and share your screen. Thank you. Okay. Interesting moment. So, uh, I'd like to present you, dear colleagues, uh, our study about university students' mental health in the wartime in Ukraine. Uh, it was conducted uh, with the great help of my colleagues from the Association of Psychologists of High School of Ukraine. Um, uh, the survey was conducted uh, using uh, this instrument, so the five questionnaires um, were taken to conduct the survey. Uh, data collection, it was web-based survey. We conducted it during February, March 2023, and we used REDCap platform uh, to um, gather the results. Uh, the sample was uh, a little bit more than 2,500 students. Uh, they were from uh, 23 higher educational establishments of Ukraine. You see here the list uh, of the cities uh, of these universities. I should mention that it is uh, all parts of Ukraine, eastern, western, northern, southern, and central part. Uh, some characteristics of our participants, uh, the most um, students were female uh, at the age of from 17 till 25, and uh, they are representatives from all academic years, from the first till the fifth and sixth year. And now uh, for the result, uh, the first questionnaire is the hospital anxiety and depression scale, and you see uh, that uh, the level of um, anxiety, normal anxiety, it's 43% here. According to this questionnaire, depression, 60% uh, of normal level and 17% uh, of abnormal. Uh, according to the next questionnaire, back depression inventory, uh, we have 42% of normal. In comparison with this, uh, you see here we have uh, 16, but um, in the Bex variant, it is mild mood disturbance, also 25%. So together we have nearly 60. Uh, then Spielberger, uh, it's about anxiety. So let's go back, oh, sorry, uh, let's go back here. We have depression, normal 60%, but according to Spielberger, uh, we have a high level of uh, anxiety, 56%, and trait anxiety, 60% of high anxiety. Um, then according, uh, as for the perceived stress, uh, we have 20% uh, of low stress and 17% of high stress. Uh, then we also asked our participants about um, their psychological well-being. And the majority of them, 94%, uh, suggested that uh, they have low level of psychological well-being. Uh, then also we have one question uh, concerning uh, some physical symptoms. Uh, the physical symptoms that we observe, uh, speaking about PTSD, for example, 
and you see that um, there are five figures. And uh, I'd like to point out that uh, only 14% of our respondents uh, said that they have uh, no such symptoms, not listed symptoms, uh, no some other symptoms. So only for the 14 percent. Uh, then we uh, try to find some correlation uh, between um, the levels of anxiety, depression, uh, perceived stress, and well-being, and some characteristics of our um, sample uh, you see here on the screen. Um, then um, very interesting. Um, uh, we conducted um, the similar survey several years ago, which was in 2020. Um, at the time, we used nearly the same questionnaires, and it was very interesting for us to compare the result and uh, to look uh, at the changes, um, what happened during this time. Uh, in 2020, uh, it was uh, the sample was 725 students, also uh, many uh, higher educational establishments of Ukraine, 16. Um, I should mention that uh, it was during the time of COVID pandemic, so also difficult time for uh, people. And here are the results of comparison. Um, anxiety and depression, uh, according to hospital anxiety and depression scale, we have um, some significant differences. And um, I'm sure we have uh, higher results in 2023. Um, according to the bags depression inventory, we see that uh, the, different is, the difference is not a bit. Uh, it's a surprise, yes, and it's a question, and it's a task for the further investigation. And then uh, this question about physical symptoms. Uh, you see that uh, there is also a significant difference between the answers and uh, the symptoms is more, are more severe now in 2023. Um, then um, it's a question for the future concerning um, providing the help for the use for the university students. Uh, for um, proper planning of uh, psychological care, uh, we asked our participants about the form of, forms of work that the psychologists that they prefer to choose. And you observe here the answer. And uh, you observe here also the comparison between 2020 and 2023. Uh, previously, we had the question um, about uh, the um, perception of Ukrainians of psychological help, uh, whether they are ready uh, to go to the psychologist or psychotherapist, and so on. And here you uh, can observe um, the answer. And um, the conclusion is the majority of uh, students, they prefer offline counseling, not telephone, not offline, uh, not group work, but offline counseling. Um, one to one work with psychologists or psychotherapists. Uh, but uh, you see also some other types of work that they prefer. Yeah, I think. Um, it's also interesting that um, these small figures uh, of participants that uh, are not ready to uh, address uh, their um, questions, their hardships to psychologists and psychotherapists. So the majority of students, they are ready to go to psychologists or psychotherapists uh, in the case that they need this. It's all uh, from me. Thank you very much for attention and for the possibility to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Kolosinik. Um, so what we'll do is um, I'm going to open up again the chat um, if people have questions for Dr. Kolosinik. And I will also circle back to some of Dr. Veli Kodna's questions because I know we we didn't have much time um, for Q&A at the start. Um, so if people want to feel free and um, put in some questions for Dr. Kolosinik in the, in the chat room. Um, and oh, there we go. Great.
And while people are typing, Dr. Kolesnik, I wanted to understand, so you were saying that um, most students said that they preferred offline counseling. What does that, when you mean offline counseling, what does that mean specifically? Uh, it means that uh, they would like to speak to the psychologist or psychotherapist one-to-one -one in, in the same room, in uh, the, the same physical um, room. Room, got it. Not virtual yeah. or not. So virtual. Not, not online, not virtual conversation, not telephone conversation, but physical presence uh, in the same room. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions for Dr. Kolosinik? Um, okay, so we have one here saying, would you mind sharing the results of the regression again? Um, are there specific risk and protective factors related to these outcomes? Dr. Specific risk and protective factors. Um, regression, uh, you mean uh, this? Um, yeah. yeah, your slide with the... Um... This regression, just a minute. This one, yeah. Um, I don't think you have your screen yeah. shared. Oh, really? We don't Just see. A moment. No. Mm -hmm. no. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what is the question? Uh, about some analysis? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. The question was. Are there specific risk and protective factors that are related to these outcomes? Um, you know, um, the results um, is very questionable. Yeah, uh, it it um, um, it should be uh, provided more uh, detailed analysis of them, um, and we are in the process of this because you know um, some um, contradiction uh, we have here when according to uh, one questionnaire, one instrument, we have uh, one result according to the other questionnaire, for example, according to depression uh, HADs, we have no correlation with the age, for example, and with the year, but according to back depression, we have this correlation, but, uh, as for the age, it is negative correlation. As for the year, it is positive correlation. And we should um, um, do some more detailed analysis and find uh, why we have some contradictory results. Uh, the same, for example, with anxiety, state trait anxiety. Also, we have this negative correlation with the age, but there is no correlation with the year. And it, it, it's also some some surprise, yes. And uh, it uh, demands uh, some more analysis, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, if you want to stop sharing your screen, Dr. Kolosinik. Uh, yes. Great. We have another question here that it says, um, "What are some challenges that you encountered in data collection that were related to the effects of the war?" And I think both of you could probably um, speak to that. So, Dr. Velikona, you also feel free to answer that. Uh, challenges uh, conducting the research. Um, I don't know. Um, I had the great support of my colleagues. Uh, that's why it was easy enough to. Uh, reach the students, yes, and to spread the information about the research and involve uh, a lot of uh, participants. Uh, but um, I think um, one of the um, hardship maybe here is that uh, it was uh, some voluntary participation and uh, only students who would like to participate, they, they do it. Uh, we don't uh, choose them uh, according to um, some um, characteristics, yes. Uh, so uh, we think about that, that maybe students who have some uh, severe symptoms of depression or maybe anxiety, they just didn't participate uh, in the survey. And because of this, we can't observe uh, the real uh, picture. Uh, the real situation uh, with these uh, figures. Maybe uh, the real level of depression, the real level of anxiety 
is higher than um, I presented here. Great, thank you. And Dr. Velikodna, I don't know if you want to speak to that as well. Yes, I, I want also want to add, I, I was involved in um, about five uh, research and I can compare that uh, compared to previous uh, years, including the COVID pandemic, we have lower uh, response rates now. So less people uh, are willing to participate in surveys, even when they are conducted remotely in, in anonymous and so on. And uh, I agree that it can be uh, like uh, just uh, a way to defend themselves about reflection. Uh, and also when we are now conducting research on the first page, we... Uh, ourselves uh, post some warnings if you are to, to feel you are to traumatized and some questions may trigger you please don't participate in this study so uh, the, the, we have these problems and uh, also concerning children's uh, when we uh, want to to, uh, to to directly meet children to conduct to, to any study to assess something, we feel that we need to have a team where one uh, psychologist is a researcher, but but we have some practical psychologists who could meet this ch this child if. Uh, this assessment will would provoke provoke some uh, negative states. Uh, so uh, and and currently we just don't have such teams. And uh, also the problem is uh, uh, people are moving r suddenly. Uh, so uh, for instance, we have um, new missile attacks on Kiev, and people just. If they had plans uh, for weekend, but they are rapidly moving, and it is uh, uh, a little simpler uh, to manage. If we are working with adults, we can just do something online, but it is impossible to do with children uh, to to get something. So like that, e ethical issues and objective uh, reality, which just. We have obstacles to collect it. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Velikodna. Um, I have one more question for you, Dr. Kolosinik. Um, here, someone asked, it looked like telehealth and podcast information has increased substantially. Is or was there any age-related effects? I have found telehealth to be ineffective with younger kids in my practice. Um, I should mention here, it is uh, about this, yes, um, I should mention that um, in 2023, it, it, this question uh, was included, but uh, we had no this question in 2020. That's why we have here zero 2020. So zero, it doesn't mean that uh, none of participants uh, prefer uh, lectures or podcasts. Uh, but yeah, we, we just included it to, in 2023 because um, we saw that uh, many young uh, people, they are uh, involved in this, they prefer this, and that's why we um, added this question. Thank you. Um, and one last question for you, Dr. Uh, Velikodna. Um, so we had a question here that was about. Um, uh, if there were any types of interventions that have been most helpful for managing the stress for children and their families. Um, um, it is a good question we, we did not ask uh, the, the, on that moment because uh, our question was, uh, I, uh, uh, were, you, were you educated to conduct crisis interventions? Were you did you get some uh, strict um, guidance uh, from the Ministry of Education and Science or some psychological stuff under you? And many people said no, I, I don't have any. So they were just like like alone with uh, doing with all that, unfortunately. And but but we asked about their sources of support. What what 
supported them and support from colleagues was highly valued. Uh, support from colleagues and uh, as for teachers, uh, teachers also uh, valued uh, very high support of children's parents. So when they felt that there is some team, they can that, that they can do it together. Uh, if I uh, remember clearly, they even had uh, le less uh, levels, lower levels of burnout when they felt that there is a team of colleagues and parents and some other stuff. Great, thank you so much. Thank you both uh, Dr. Kolosinik and Dr. Velikodna. This uh, was wonderful to hear both of all the amazing work that both of you are doing. Um, I'm putting a link now in the chat for everyone to go back to the main room. So please follow that Zoom link. Um, and again, thank you. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.